2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. What kind of animal has a uh, hair like wool, a fur like wool? A sheep. A sheep has woolly textured hair. Right, so when they when they shear the sheep, it's really thick. Right? Come on. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. Now he says, now John is looking at Christ's feet. He said his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is a color of brown, is a derivative of brown. Right? Read on. Let's see how dark that brown gets. As if they burned in a furnace. He said Christ's feet were so black that they look like they burned in the furnace. Right. So if we burn anything, you burn rice, toast, steak, you burn it, it's going to turn black. Right. John is telling us in Revelations that Christ looks like he was burned in the furnace. He was so dark. But why the world give us this man? You understand what I'm saying? This is what, what, what the Bible calls the image of the beast. Let's prove that. Give me Revelations 13, starting at verse 7. Bring it up. Revelations 13 and 7. Come on. Revelations. Revelations chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The saints of God is not Saint Teresa. It's not Saint John Paul II. The saints of God are the God's chosen people. Israelites. Yes, right. Where do you see yourself on this sign, sister? What's your nationality? Uh, nationality. Israel. What's your nationality? Where are you from? Uh, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Dominican. Yes, those are the 12 tribes. So where, where's your father from? Where's your father from? Yeah, but where's he, where, where were you born from? Where, where's your father born? In Guatemala. So you'll be from the tribe of Zebulon. That's your, that's your forefather, your great, great, great grandfather, so to speak, according to the Bible, right? So come on, read that. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So power was given to a certain a certain man or a race of people over all tongues and kindreds and people on the face of the earth. Who's ruling the world today? Give me, hold that, give me Job 9, 924. Who's ruling the earth today? Who's in power? Who, who has the world power today? Think about it. What nation of people have world power today? Who's in rulership today? Who? Who? I can't Okay. What nation on the earth today rules the entire world? Okay, let's find out. Job chapter 9 verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. God says the earth, the planet earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And that wicked man, that wicked race, covered the faces of the judges. Remember, there's a book of judges in the Bible because God made us priests, kings, and judges. Right? When we have laws, we need a judge to and help interpret the laws and enforce the laws, correct? Right. So he covers the faces of the judges because he gives us now these images that he is God. You understand that, sister? So now this race, and I'm going to say the, the, the number one power in the world right now is America. 
You understand what I'm saying? Yes. He has rulership over all kindreds and tongues, over all nations. Go back. Read verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. So everyone that's going to dwell on the earth is going to look at this man, this race of people, as gods. They're going to say, is, don't, don't marry the moreno. Marry the blanquito. Why? Because he's better. He got better skin. He got better hair. He got pelo malo aquí. Pero el blanco tiene pelo uh, suave, bonito. Right? That's what they're going to tell you. But that's wrong according to God. Come on. Whose names are not written in the book of life? But God says that man, his name is not written here in the book of life. That's right. Repentance is not for him. Repentance is for us. That's right. You understand that? Come on. Read on. Of the, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Give me verse AS uh, 15. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now this man had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Remember I said that this is the image of the beast. You understand that? This is the image of the beast. How do you have power to give life to it? I'm going to break it down for you, okay? I'm going to give you understanding. When when this man puts himself as Christ, as God, remember this, uh, the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican, in Rome. They have uh, God in a pink outfit and Adam on the other side with, with white angels, baby angels, all that, pointing each other's finger like this, right? That's him giving power to the image of the beast. What else did he do? He took Leonardo da Vinci in the Renaissance period in 1453, repainted the image of Caesar Borgia, who this man is, the modern model of Jesus the Christ. He was the son of Pope Alexander VI, the Papa. But the Papa was an evil man. He was a very wicked man, and he had his son who was a criminal, who was a murderer, a thief, and he slept with his own sister, and was a homosexual. All things according, that's against to God, he put him as the image of God. So now when you see him in the movies, when you see him in the movies, yes, they do that Right, they put that image everywhere. They put him in your movies, Passion of the Christ, the Bible stories. They see him on Telemundo and the, the novellas and all that, right? You, you see these images as, as God. So when we see him, we say, oh, that must be God. He must be nice. He is, he is bonito. He is uh, muy lindo, all this, that, and the third, right? But when we look at our brothers as that 9 out of 10 are, are, are black or, or darker skin or whatever with, with melanin or color, we say, no, they're bad. They're bad. Go to some, go somebody. We tell our daughters, go marry the white man. They don't like me too. <laughs> they don't like you either, right? <laughs> the hell is this? Come on, read. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. And, and they should both speak, like again, in the movies. Because when we see this man getting crucified, on the on the on the TV and speaking the Bible, oh God loves us all and don't worry Peter, everything will be all right. You know we're gonna be like oh Diosito, oh he's so nice, he's so lindo, right? You're gonna see he's, he's so beautiful. Oh God bless him, and you're gonna do the sign of the cross, right? They give image, they give power to this image that he should both speak and what else? And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Should be killed. So now let, let's take a, 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 a history lesson, all right? I travel back in time, so to speak. Our ancestors, okay, our ancestors. When the conquistadors came, they said, listen, if you don't worship, we're going to start burning you alive. We're going to tie you down. From where? Italy. Yeah, the image came from Italy, from Rome. The Roman, the Roman Catholics, the Catholic Church is full of devils. That's right. Full of devils. Why? Because they give you a false image of God, a false image of Christ, a false image of the angels, and then they say, you must worship us. So they destroyed us in slavery. They destroyed us when the conquistadors came. They took everything we had. That's how the Catholic Church became rich. They killed them. 
Yeah, they killed everyone. Wow. Only a remnant of us was left around to repopulate and be slaves for the white man. You understand that, sis? Why? Because they gave us this image. Now, because we were destroyed, because we were destroyed as a people. Right. In the movie, exactly. That's how he gave life to the to the image of the beast. You understand? They do by they mentally. They mentally destroyed us. They they changed it. They lied to us. So what else did they lie about? Give me Deuteronomy 33 and 29. Let's find out. If these people are our friends, our enemies, according to God. Okay? What we're trying to teach is the truth of the Bible. What we're trying to teach is that this image of Christ is a false image. It's an image of the beast. Image of Satan, so to speak. Come on. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency, and thy enemies shall be found liars. God says our enemies will be found liars. Those people who enslaved our people, raped our women, took our natural resources, who now take the wood from your land, who now take the water from your land, who have your people growing food, yet they take it, your people can't even eat. We, we have the farms in our lands, in between uh, Guatemala and Mexico, we have the farmland. We grow food for almost ha uh, half the world, yet we can't even have it. Yes, yes. So Deuteronomy chapter 28. What happens here is that God recorded what will happen to us in these latter days because we broke his commandments. Give me that. Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you how we know that we as a people are these people here on the sign. That we're the children of Israel. That's good. Everyone worships this image. So we all have the image of Christ in our heart. Absolutely, God allows us to live and to, and to die whenever He so chooses. But the image. They are white. They are white. They don't like black or they don't like dark skin or Indian. Uh, I look like hell. I think I feel it like I'm a Yes, here. Half black, half Indian. Half black, half Indian. That's okay. But they, they, they don't, they don't, they don't believe that. They, they Ooh. believe only they like only white color. Correct, correct. I never can change my my skin. Right, you can't change your skin color, right? No. But but they can change the image of God, though, no. which they did. Oh no. You understand that? It's not, it's not only only white white color that we change. Right? Okay, now listen, sister. You can't believe in this image, so don't put this in your house. Oh, I say that this, this image, I yeah. don't believe that. Good. Don't believe it. Because Christ in our hearts, in our mind, that's what the heart is according to the Bible, the mind, is that we should know and see Christ something similar to this picture. That's right. Because that's what the Bible described to us. You understand that, sis? Jesus Christ being a black man is, is correct according to the Bible. That's right. When we worship this, and we see this in our church, in our communities, whether it's down in uh, Mexico, Guatemala, Peru, Florida, Texas, no matter where this image is at, just know that they're teaching lies. This image is teaching nothing but pure lies. That's not God. That's not how God looks like. It's, it's our enemies took our book, and they changed the images in it. You understand? What are enemies? These are our enemies, correct. Correct. Now let me show you what happened to us because we broke God's commandments. So why did our people suffer all these atrocities? Where our, our children uh, were chopped up into pieces to be fed to the dogs. Where our children were dashed against the rocks. They take them by the feet. Boom. Smash them. They burn us by 13. 12 for the disciples, one for Christ. Because they know we're the children of God. That's right. That's right. You understand that? Come on. To the rhyme in chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God says if we don't listen to him, curses was going to fall upon us. 
Curses, are they good or bad? Are curses good or bad? Uh, curses, bad. Bad thing, they're bad, bad things. Bad, bad, bad. So God says bad things will happen to you if you break my laws. Right. You understand? Yes. Let's see one of the curses that happened to our people, to, to the natives of the land. Okay, come on. Give me verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail what longer for them all the day long. God says our sons and daughters will be given to another people. Let's make it plain. Give me verse 41. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. We will have children. But thou shalt not enjoy them. Why? For they shall go into captivity. Our children went into slavery as well. They took into captivity, yes. Oh, that's why that, that happened. That happened to who? Mm -hmm. All people are also... to us, right? Yeah. To us. What is God trying to show you? That you are an Israelite. Tu eres un Israelita. That's right. That's the tribe of Zebulun. The tribe of Zebulun. The tribe of Israel. Wow. Wow. Because you are going to understand now. That's right. 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 Read what you got. All right. Let me read the title. All right. So this book is called Bartolome de la Casas, an account much abbreviated of the destruction of the Indies. All right. So on the island of Hispaniola, on the island of Hispaniola, which was the first, as we said, wherein the Christians entered and began the devastation and perdition of these nations and first destroyed them and wiped the land clean of the inhabitants. These Christians began to take the women and children of Indians to serve them and use them ill, and they would eat the victuals that issued from the sweat of their bowels. So what the Bible says that the Christians who came, who came from Europe, okay, they would come to our lands, right? They would just, they, they said they almost wiped us all away, meaning killed us almost all off. In the island of Hispaniola, there were over 12 million people living. And that island alone. The Hispaniola, Hispaniola, the island where the Dominican Republic is today, that's where Columbus landed. Right? With the conquistadors. They killed over, they left, you know how many people? A lot. They left alive out of 12 million, 1 million. Wow. That's a, that's a genocide. That's a holocaust. Yeah. You understand that? Yes. And then they took those children that were still alive as sex slaves. Wow. For their own pleasure. And then they made them work in the fields. We don't. And their hard work and yet still were not content with that. The Indians gave them willingly according to the ability that each one had. Which is not ever much for they, so for they seldom have more than that which they have most in, immediate need of end can produce with little labor. And in truth, what suffices for three houses of ten persons each for a month, a Christian will eat and destroy in one day. So all the food that we gathered for one month that could feed ten people in three houses. The conquistadors were so greedy, so gluttonous, that they ate them all in one day. Think about that. You grow food all summer long. You're waiting for your tomatoes, your cucumbers, you understand, for you in your garden. Now all of a sudden, it's harvest season. You, what, you, what you stored up for a one month to feed three families, they ate it all in one day. You understand that? That's curse in our fields, that's curse in our land. Read on. Is that it? Come on. Christians did the many other acts of compass, compulsion and violence and vexation. Christians. So Christians, 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 Christians. They're supposed to believe in Jesus Christ. But did these Christians believe in Christ? Not at all. No. Not at all. Why? Because Christians or Christianity is not of the Bible. That's right. That's right. Understand what I'm saying? 
Christianity as a religion is not of God. To be a Christian, you have to walk after Christ. Give me John 14, 15. I'm going to show you what it means to be a Christian. It's not a biblical religion. This, this, the Bible is not, there's no Catholic in the Bible. There's no Christian. There's no Jehovah Witness in the Bible. There's no Baptist in the Bible. Oh, no, no, no. I don't it's not in the Bible. Those are man-made religions that call themselves Christians. You understand that? Right. All religions that were created by our enemies to destroy our people mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Right. Yeah. But let's see how, how it is to be a Christian, okay? Let's find out what it means to be Christian according to God. Read. Get up. Get up. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Get up. If you love me, keep my commandments. What did God say? You love me, keep my commandments. So God says, if you love him, keep his commandments. That's how you be a Christian. There's more than ten. I'm gonna show you why. There's more than ten. Oh, okay. Did you know that? Give me um give me Matthew 23. Give me I'm gonna show you there's more than ten. Give me Matthew 23, two great commandments. Okay? You know what I want? 22, Why they describe in the Bible Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments were found in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter. That's only for uh, Moses? No, 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 no. no? Christ also spoke Moses' words. Oh. Christ taught the laws of Moses. Okay. okay. You understand that? Yeah. But the Ten Commandments are like ten main laws. Yeah. Under the laws, there's statutes. There's ordinances. For example, for example, uh, you have a traffic law. In New York. Here it says you can only park here for one hour except for Sunday. Sunday you can park all day. That's a statute under the traffic law. I saw you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I am. So same with the Ten Commandments. Come on, let's get that. I want to show you there's more than ten now. I'm gonna show you how. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37. Bring it out. Jesus said unto him. Uh, start at verse 35. Verse 35, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So he asked Christ, uh, the Pharisee, right? He said, which is the great commandment in the law? Okay, watch what Jesus says. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So Christ said you're going to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Is that in the Ten Commandments? It's not in the Ten. It's not written of the Ten, but the first four commandments pertain to that, to that commandment. You understand that? Let's find out where it's written. Give me that in Deuteronomy 6. 6 and 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So Christ is now quoting Deuteronomy, but we find the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus. Meaning what? There's more than ten. Go back. Come on. Give me the next, the second greatest law Christ quoted. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So Christ says the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Where do we find that? Is that in the Ten Commandments? No. So now, let's go and find out what law that is. Give me Leviticus 19 and 17. And then we're going to give you understanding on why God, Christ says those two laws are the great, are the greatest two laws. Bring it up! We read the entire Bible. You're reading... From the Genesis to Revelation. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we, you know, you know everything. We study. What God says to study. Let's let's find out why. Hold this. Hold this. Give me uh, that in Timothy 3:16. This is what God commanded us to do. Right? Listen. Second Timothy, chapter three, and verse. So verse two, verse fifteen. Study. 316. 316 you want? Uh, okay. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
So God gave the entire Bible for us. He inspired the entire, entire Bible to be written for us. All the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation is given by God. Come on. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all the scripture is given for us for profit. It's going to profit us to do what God says. That's right. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Right. It's going to be profitable to us. So if your pastor or your minister or your priest tell you that the Old Testament is done away with, how is that profitable to you? Because those are the laws in where Christ was teaching from, Christ was quoting from. John chapter 5 and verse 46. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. So Christ says, if you believe the words of Moses, then you're going to believe in him. Right? Why? For he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? So Christ says, if you don't believe what's written in the Old Testament, how are you going to believe what, what Christ is saying to, to you to repent? Both are the same. Christ and Moses saying the same thing. That's right. The Old Testament and the New Testament. Remember, when Christ walked the earth with the disciples, was there a New Testament written? No, but the Old Testament. No. No. No, no, no. That's the that's. So my question. Okay, that's your question. Is the Old Testament passed away? No. Why? When Christ walked the earth, there was no New Testament. It wasn't written yet. Right. Christ was teaching what? The Old Testament. He was teaching the laws of Moses. You understand the same thing with uh, with uh, Paul. Paul. Paul taught the same thing as Moses taught. He didn't teach nothing different from uh, Moses. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.